next one, it does have a number in front. So, so far, I'm going to do everything exactly the same up to this point, okay? Then after that, I can't shortcut to the answer. I have to go the little bit longer route with the grouping, okay? So I am going to multiply these two together. 3 times negative 16 is a negative 48. So I'm going to write that off over here. Um, what is the square root of 48? Square root of 48, double arrow, is about 6.9 something or another. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 48 divided by 1 is 48. 48 divided by 2 is 24. 48 divided by 3 is 16. 48 divided by 4 is 12. 48 divided by 5 is a decimal. And 48 divided by 6, I believe, is 8. Yes. OK, now it is going to need to be a negative. So one of these columns is going to have to be negative. And since the middle is negative, that tells me that the big number, the big column, whatever's in the middle, that's the sign of the big column. And since I need a negative, this needs to be positive. Otherwise, you'd have negative and a negative, which makes positive. It's not supposed to be positive. It's supposed to be a negative 48. So once I know what the signs are, we just got to find the ones that give us two. And I think that's going to be these guys, right? Six plus a negative eight does give me negative two. Now, remember, once we find that set of numbers, we don't just write x plus six and x minus eight. We have to split this guy using these two numbers. So don't forget, because this guy has a variable on it, when you split it, those numbers also have to have that same variable in the middle. So this is going to be a positive 6x minus an 8x. And if you combine these two variables together, you do get that negative 2x. Then from here, we're going to group. So the left side has a 3 and an x in common, which gives me x plus 2. If you're not sure, distribute that in and make sure you get these two entries. I must bring down that minus sign. And these two can both be divided by 8. And you should get the same as this parenthesis. So I'm going to write x plus 2, but I am going to double check that that's correct. I do get both of those values, so it is good. If you don't, then this is probably not the GCF. If you don't, if this doesn't multiply to give you that. Okay, now what do the two sides have in common? Well, the only thing they have in common is x plus 2. And so what do I have left over? The 3x and the 8. Okay, and then that's the total factorization there. Okay, we've got another one, a pretty big one. So this was one of those special ones, and I kind of X'd it out when we got to that section because you don't need to memorize more rules, okay? If it's a trinomial, just do the method that we're using for trinomials. So 25 times nine. I get two, two, five. What is the square root of two, two, five? It's 15. So I'm going to have to go down this list all the way to 15, just so we can get all of the possibilities. So let's see, this 225 divided by one is 225. 225 divided by two is decimal. 225 divided by three, is 75. Since it can't be divided by two, it's not going to be able to be divided by any other even number. Um, so I'm just going to cross off all the even numbers because they're all going to be decimals. Now, 225 divided by five is 45. 225 divided by seven, nope. 225 divided by nine. 225 divided by third, oh, 11. Nope. 225 divided by 13. And 225 divided by 15. 
and 15. And so remember, this is a positive times a positive, which gave me a positive 225. And we need, this is a positive, so they're going to be the same sign, either both negative or both positive. That's the only way you'll get a, a positive when you multiply. But we know that the bigger one needs to be negative, right? So we know these need to be negative. But in order for me to multiply and get a positive, these also have to be negative. And so which of these is going to combine to give me that negative 30 in the middle? It's going to be this one. Negative 15 plus negative 15 is that negative 30. So I'm going to break this up. 25x squared, and I'm going to write negative 15x and negative 15x. And so then I'm going to chop it in half. This side can be divided by 5, and they have an x in common. So I get 5x minus 3. The middle sign must come down. These guys could both be divided by 3. I end up with positive 5x minus 3. Double check that you do get these two terms. And then this side and that side both have a 5x minus 3 in common. But if I took it out, I'd have a 5x left on the left side. And if I took that out, I'd have a minus 3 left on the right-hand side. Since they're the exact same thing, you can write it as 5x minus 3 squared. OK? And that special product formula, um, we basically had to recognize that um, this was a perfect square, this was a perfect square, and if you multiplied those perfect squares together and then doubled them, you would get 30, and then knowing that, you would end up with that square root and this square root with this symbol in the middle squared, okay? But again, I like to memorize less stuff because it's already a bunch that you have to memorize. Um, the less that I have to memorize, the better. So one less formula, as long as I get the big, the big process, I'm good. And this process works with all trinomials. That formula only works with a special kind of trinomial. Okay, these special kinds of trinomials. But this method works for all trinomials. Now, here we have two terms. So the thing I want to do is try to factor out a GCF, but there is not one between these two numbers. The only things that go into here are fives or factors of five, and fives does not go into that. This doesn't have any t's either, so I don't have any variables in common. So I am going to go straight into the factoring of difference of two cubes, cubes, because this is a power of three. So let me see. The square root of 729 is 27. So this is 27. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'm not doing the square root. I'm doing the cube. I'm not doing the square root, I'm doing the cube root. So let's see, what is the cube root? You need to know how to put that in your calculator. So here is the regular square root. This is any kind of root. So I'm gonna type in three second, and then this button up here, and notice it turns the three into a tiny cube root. And then I'm gonna type 729. And I actually get nine T, cubed is 729 t. And then here, 3, this, 125. OK, so now I know what the perfect cubes are. I'm going to use that formula. So the formula says for me to write 9t and 5, and whatever symbol's here, that's the same symbol that goes in the middle. Then I'm going to do 9t times itself. That gives me 81t squared. Whatever this sign is, the next one is opposite. 9t times 5 is 45t. The last one's always a positive. And then 5 times 5 is 25. And so this is the factorization using the difference of cubes. Okay, so here it wants me to factor out the trinomial. 
Just FYI, if you have a negative, you must factor out that negative. Um, but I don't see that these have anything else in common. These have something in common, but not with the seven. And it has to have it in common with all three terms. So the only thing I'm gonna do is factor out the negative, which is gonna turn this guy positive, this guy positive, and this guy negative. Now, when I continue with the process, it does have a number in front, so I do need to do the AC method, but I'm only working on this. My final answer will have the two bubbles like this with a minus on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to strictly take this polynomial off to the side and try to factor it. Okay, so seven times negative 16 is negative 112, and the square root of 112 is 10 point something. So I'm going to go one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so then one, one, two divided by one, 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 two divided by two, I think it's 56. One, one, two divided by three is a decimal. Divided by four is 28. Divided by five is a decimal divided by six is a decimal, divided by seven is 16, divided by eight is 14, divided by nine is a decimal, and divided by 10 is a decimal. So it outrolled a bunch of them. I do have five different options here though. Since the middle, remember I'm not working with this anymore. I'm working with this. So since the middle one is positive, that means that the bigger one will be positive. But I do need to multiply to get a negative, which means that the littler ones will have to be a negative, okay? So then which of these will give me 24 when I combine them? It's actually this pair right here. Negative four plus 28 does give me a positive 24. So I'm gonna split this. Um, that 24y is going to become negative 4y and positive 28y. Let me bring this guy in. I wrote him too far out. Okay, now here I'm going to chop it in half. Always make sure that if you combine these two that they do give you that middle term. Now this side has a y in common. I must bring down that plus sign. This side has a two in common. Oh no, they have a four in common. We must take out the greatest common factor. So they actually can both be divided by four, which makes sense because I should have the same thing in parentheses, right? And if I used a two, this would have been 14 and then they wouldn't have matched. But four times that is that, four times this is this, so we're good. These two sides have a 7y minus 4 in common. And if I took that 7y minus 4 out, I would end up with y plus 4. So now I know what goes in here. And this is the final factorization. OK, last problem. You would try to see if there's a common factor for the whole thing, but there's not. This has no variables. That has no number. So no GCF. So the next thing I'm going to do is just chop it in half. So these guys actually have an x squared in common, leaving me with 4x plus 1. Remember, this times this has to equal that. This times this has to equal that. I must bring down the minus. These two guys can both be divided by 7. So I should end up with 4x plus 1, the same as this, but let's double check. Negative 7 times 4x, yes. Negative 7 times positive 1, yes. So then the two sides have the 4x plus 1 in common, and I'm left with x squared minus 7. If this was a perfect square, I would factor this some more, but it's not, so this is the final answer. And that is the end of this section.
Now you have the processes. So definitely come back to these videos for reference as far as the processes. But those numbers are gonna be different for every single problem you get. So they're never going to be exactly like each example that I've shown. And there's no possible way that I can show you every single problem, okay? So you just have to learn the processes and once you get down that process, you can factor any trinomial. Once you get down the grouping process, you can factor any uh, four-termed polynomial. And once you get down the GCF and the difference of squares, difference of cubes, sum of cubes, you can factor all your, tri your binomials, okay? So that is factoring. We will be factoring throughout the entire course. You will also factor a whole bunch in pre-cal. You'll factor a bunch in Cal 1, Cal 2, Cal 3. Factoring never ends, okay? You must, must, must get this process down, okay? It is super important, super helpful in the future. There's no way around it. This is one of those big concepts that you're just gonna see all the time. And believe it or not, the factoring process, this whole process, like you're expected to do that whole process so super turbo fast, okay? Like very fast, okay? So I know you're gonna take it slow while you're in this section because you're learning, but when we get to the classroom um, and we start getting to those later sections, factoring is just like a little mini step, okay? It's not the entire step of the problem. It's just a tiny little mini step. And so you definitely want to master it before we continue. It's very important. But that concludes our section. And I will stop the video here. And as always, if you get questions while you're doing the assignment, you get stuck on a problem, you, you know, something I did in here doesn't make sense, please, please, please text me. 